Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, our schedule is really tight tonight, so I'm hoping that I only have to say this once. Assalamu alaikum. Beautiful, mashallah, thank you so much. I'm Amna Anwar, I'm the former Vice President USA of MSA National and the current ex officio. Our amazing programs task force has arranged a phenomenal lineup for all of you tonight. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that the Adhan for Maghrib will be at 7.45 and Maghrib will be held in Main Hall C. We begin with recitation of the Qur'an by Brother Abdul Basit. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير Our first speaker for tonight, you all know him and love him, Imam Suhaib Webb. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأول والآخرين حبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله This is a lot bigger stage than what I've been used to uh, the whole week and this is kind of astounding mashallah It's very beautiful to see so many people uh, in the audience May Allah reward uh, ISNA and, and MSA for this effort that they're doing my, my whole weekend basically has been with MSA and I just want to share with you something that Dr. Tariq Ramadan alluded to yesterday when you are mixing with these young energetic people seeing the dynamism that's amongst them the incredible combustion of creativity meeting with spirituality you're reminded of a very, very beautiful prophetic narration of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which all of us should hold dear to our hearts. And the scholars would label this hadith under what's called Mubashirat, meaning those hadith which grant good tidings to the community of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And he said, Al Khayru Yakunu fi Ummati Hatta Taqumu Sa. The Prophet said that goodness will be in my community till the end of time the days of an apocalyptic theology, what one of my teachers called Taswidul Hayat, turning life into, you know, nothing but a dismal reality or over. These very talented, focused young men and women who represent the Muslim Students Association have at least proven to me in my interaction with them over the last few months that change is coming, in America, how we run our organizations, how we run our nonprofits, how we run our masajid, how we interact with Muslims as well as non Muslims is going to change. And that change is for the better. So I give you the glad tidings of a young generation, Jil Rabbani, Aujilul Jadid, 
a new generation of Muslim leadership which is being sparked by the efforts of the Muslim Student Association. That being said, as a convert to Islam of almost 19 years ago, a father of two, an imam in the city of Boston, Massachusetts, I just want to share with you a few important points and then I need to run, as always, as you know, to catch a plane. We're always catching planes. Number one, that this is an age of institution building. The model of the Mehdi syndrome, the Superman syndrome, the one man show or one woman show should be over. But what we need to look forward to now is not only building individuals, but building individuals who are going to be able to work together to serve the cause of goodness in all levels. Ya'qub said to his children, Udkhulu abwa mutafarriqa. Enter into many different doors when you go into the city, not one door. For that reason as parents, and I'm a parent, I'll give you just a few advices. Number one, your relationship with your children is that of the sun in the moon. Yusuf said in the Quran, Joseph, inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban wa shamsa wal qamar ra'aytuhum li sajideen. He said that I saw the moon and the sun and the stars prostrating to me. The scholars said that the sun and the moon are your parents in relationship to the children. So a few points. Number one, we should be advisors, not supervisors. The challenge of parenting is to help maneuver the creativity, the genius and energy of our children without stifling that. So my advice to you is to encourage your children to think outside of the box. Engage your children, young adults, to think in different ways. Conventional methods of thinking are not necessarily what's best now. But original experiences with you and the creativity that you can help spawn, maybe you will be a mother who will gift to this ummah the likes of Imam Malik. Maybe you will be a father who will gift to this ummah the likes of Dr. Muhammad Yunus. But in order to do that, we cannot suffocate in the name of culture and piety the creativity that Allah has bestowed in the breasts of our children. And that's why Umar, bin Abd, uh, Umar ibn Khattab, when his son said to him, I knew the answer, I knew the answer. And he said, if you would have said that answer in front of the Prophet and his companions, it would have been more beloved to me than everything in this world. Number two, for the young people, you are the canvas of America. What are you going to paint remains to be seen. But I'm very optimistic at what we hope to see. But I will just share with you a few points. Number one is to move beyond thinking about yourself. My son is only eight years old. I named him after Malcolm X. And he asked me one time, Father, how can I be a good man? This is a great question for a young child to ask his father. I said, transcend yourself. He said, tran what? I said, clap out the syllables. Transcend yourself. Live for others. Live for other causes. In a madrasa that I helped run, one of my students who's memorizing the Quran in Boston, he asked me, he came the other day to class, he said, I'm ready to read. I said, stop reading. He said, what do you want me to do? I said, go volunteer for the Obama campaign and come back after November. Go learn. This is not an endorsement for Obama, although I do ride a donkey. And I've never thrown peanuts at a human being compared them to an elephant. And oppression is very real in this country, we see it. But the point was go and learn how to serve the community. Go and learn community organization. Because if you have all the Quran in your heart and you are ill-equipped to speak the language of the people of this country, it will serve you very little. Till now, these conventions are very internalized. What would be incredible is that we offered subjects and ideas and discussions that engaged America, not simply Western Muslims.
So I encourage you as young people to think deeply, to utilize your experiences through MSA, to think outside of the box. And if the community doesn't agree with you, then occupy your community. Because the days of being bullied and threatened, whether because we are women, whether because we are young, whether because we are converts, are over. And the way that that will end is not by clapping. Clapping is wonderful. But the way that is going to end is to reinvest in our communities, not only financially, but with our genius and with our talents and with our creativity. There should be a reciprocation between Imam and congregation. Without you, Suhaib Webb is nothing. Without you, Suhaib Webb doesn't have a playground to ball on. But with that interaction, that dynamic that we share as a community, and we learn from each other, and we admit our mistakes, and we grow and refine for the sake of Allah, then we will be, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the mutqineen, those people who have perfected their effort for Allah. And that is a sign of ihsan. So as I finish, learn now to move beyond a personal narrative of your life. If every day you think about your life, it's my pad, it's iPad, it's my space, it's my face. We say, Iyaka na'budu. We worship you together. Remind yourself that your career, your profession, your success will be polished if you're able to invest that back into institutions and change the nomenclature and the dynamics of institutions in this country. Till now, we as converts experience a social depression. No matter how large the mosque and the community center is, we will not feel comfortable until we see mashed potatoes, grits, pot roast, and biscuits for iftar. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum. Jazakallah khair, Imam Suhaib.